Hey, what is up everyone on Yaosh and whoever's watching this on my channel. Today I actually have a tutorial for you. So there isn't really much a decent title I can add to this to give it really context, but I'm just going to call it Midnight's Workflow Tutorial. We're covering a host of topics just to speed up your workflow and get shit done faster. And a lot of really small but really helpful things just to know as tips in your arsenal to get things done faster. Before I jump into it, I just want to say this isn't necessarily going to be something I do super frequently. If people really like it, then I'll do it maybe every other week. At, at this point, I'm not really that confident in doing the whole commentator slash tutorial kind of thing. But if you guys think I am good at it, you think I should get better, you think I should do it more often, feel free to tell me. I'd really appreciate seeing loads of comments uh, with opinions on them. So the first section I'm going to call layers. It's all about what happens in the layers tab. And the first thing that I want to cover is a mask. So a mask is pretty much when you want to erase something, you'll usually just you can grab the eraser tool and then rub things out. But the problem with that is if you want to go back and get what you had before, you'd have to, you know, undo it over and over again. And sometimes you can undo it to a point where you can't actually keep going that much. And you know, undoing things over and over can be really, really frustrating. So masks are a lot better to use. Just go down here, click on this button, and you'll instantly have an added mask. So I'm going to make this a little larger so you can see it. So on the mask, you'll notice that it's pure white. What it's done is it's literally just added an invisible white kind of fill on top of it, right? And it turns whatever color you have in your palace to black and white. And the black and the white is super important. So you grab your brush. It doesn't matter if whatever hardness it is, whatever size it is, but imagine this is now your eraser. Anything that you paint on that with the brush onto the mask, make sure you click the mask, which is black, will hide wherever you're painting. And the white will equally do the complete opposite, so you can repaint on there in a really simple way. It means that if you want to get rid of something and you know that later on you might need to change that, the mask can do that for you. I mean, you can make loads of changes with the, you know, the black, and then if you really, really messed up, you can just go ahead and right-click on the mask and delete it, and it'll be gone. So it's a really great way to uh, to do what's called non-destructive erasing. Super simple to use, really improves your workflow, and it's really great practice. Now the next thing is effects. I know a lot of people use effects, so I'm going to go ahead and cover some things. The quickest way to get to effects is just to double-click the layer. The other way, if you want to know what you we want to add specifically, is to go down here to the effects button, and then say you want to add a drop shadow, click that, and it'll instantly take you to that. Also, you can just get to the original dialog by just clicking on blending options. So like I said, faster way, double click, and you're good to go. One thing I want to point out is, these are actually ordered in terms of priority. So, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily on top of each other when you add them, but for some of them, it really is. So the overlays, for example, you can't have a pattern overlay, like uh, say just add this one, and then have a gradient overlay just as it is right on top, because they'll conflict if they worked any other way, which means that the gradient, whatever you add as a gradient on top, straight at, right out of that, will cover the pattern. And same way for the color. Add a color in, and it will cover both the gradient and the pattern. So if you want to add things in like that, you need to figure out the smart way of doing it. So a really quick example, say you want to, you know, like a diagonal scan lines like I have right here. And you're on the pattern overlay. So let's say you want a gradient to that, add the gradient in, and you can either change the blending mode to something like multiply or overlay. Or alternatively, just have it on normal and turn down the opacity. And you'll be able to show through the scan lines. Color overlay can do the same. Just make sure that maybe if you want to just call the gradient and uh, you don't want to actually add colors into the gradient, you just set that to color and there you go, you got all three. Just be smart about how you add things and it will work out for you. Another thing to note is once you've added the effects layers like a drop shadow, inner shadow, okay, uh, you can click on this arrow right here that usually collapses and opens the little menu. Right click on it. And there's an option here called Create Layers near the bottom. Now, Create Layers actually turns all of these specific effects into their own separate layers. So you'll notice that if I hide everything, the drop shadow is literally just the exact same thing, blurred a little, little and darkened. So that's, that's something to note. Another thing is also that 
you can't have, for example, a brand new layer with nothing on it and then just add whatever effects you want. You can say drop shadow, in a shadow, you can even have gradient, whatever you want, and okay that. It won't work. The way an effects layer works is it'll add any effects onto whatever pixel data is on there. It doesn't matter what color it is, it doesn't matter how it looks like, how it looks like, what shape it is, there needs to be some sort of pixel data, there needs to be some pixels on that layer for the effects to do anything at all. So if I were to fill in maybe a square right now, like this, it would instantly then add the effects layers that you put on originally. Also, another note is if you have two layers and you have one effects layer and one that you really like, like this one's you know, like a really awesome shade of green, and uh, you want to have that same thing on maybe a slightly different layer, and a really great way to change that, you know, to, to copy and paste, is to right click on the arrow and you can copy the layer style. Alternatively, you, you can clear the layer style if you want to, just to get rid of everything. So if I copy this, I can go over to this one and paste it just as easily and it will then copy exactly what you've added in the pixel data for the FX layer. Another great tip for, for layers is to know where to click. So if you actually do add some sort of FX, be aware that some areas won't do what you want them to, want them to do. So if you want to right click uh, maybe here or even in the arrow section, you'll notice that if I click in the arrow section I'll be given these options and if I click in just the ordinary section where the text isn't there. It'll give me slightly different options, but some of them will stick around, like the copy, paste, and clear layer styles. Notice that if you, for example, click on the thumbnail, you'll get completely different options. So be aware of where you're actually clicking when you do things. Another quick tip is if you want to make a new layer, but you don't want the layer to be on top, you want it to be below, hold Control or Command on the Mac and click the new layer button, and it will instantly be a layer underneath as opposed to just clicking it and getting a layer above. This next section is called tools. It's pretty much explaining some of the tools. I'm not really trying to show you how they work, but just to try and help you with the popular ones. Now, I know a lot of people sometimes get to the, you know, get to an occasion where they have something and they want to cut it out, and it's a really simple cutout. So I have my black logo against white. I want to get rid of that white. I would simply you know, if I were someone who didn't really know what I was doing, I'd grab the, you know, magic wand tool and click on the white and then hit the delete key. Uh, yes, that is a way of getting rid of simple things like that because it's white against black, which is pretty good, I'll admit. It's done an okay job. But the magic wand tool is a very, very predictive tool, which means you will get hard edges. However, you know, however well you think you did it, you'll get hard edges because it's predicted. It doesn't really exactly know what you want. It's just guessing for the most part, which is why it's not really the best choice if you want to do something like that. Another predictive tool that people don't actually really think about is the polygon lasso tool. I know a lot of people like it because of two things. First thing is when you're done and you just, you know, put everything together, it'll instantly select it, which is quick. I, I know that. And I, I realize why people want to use it so much, also because of the, the what's called the rubber band, because it follows you around and you know where your next point is going to be set. Another really, you know, really nice thing to know about the Polygon Lasso tool is you can actually switch between the Polygon and the original Lasso tool on the fly. So let's say you make a line up here, and then line here, and then here, and suddenly you want to you want to go around the corner. So you just hold Alt, and it'll instantly take you to the Lasso tool as long as you click and hold. So right here I've clicked on a point and I, you know, I'm not click, clicking down and I can move around with the rubber band following me. If you hold Alt and you start clicking and dragging it will instantly start being the lasso tool instead. So this last section is anything to do with really fun manipulations and um, when you want to add something sort of visual effects style this pretty much covers that and helps you get better at it. So the first thing I want to cover is gradient maps. What you see right now is a speed art I did not long ago from this video called Hunter. Now this is the final, so it has all the gradient maps on it, and I'll show you the original without any gradient maps turned on. So here's the original, super super bland, the depth is gone, and the colors are really not how they should be. I mean, I'll switch back a few times just so you can see the difference. This is with, this is without. So you can really really tell the difference between them. 
and yeah, they're pretty much vital with something like this. So I'll show you what I've done here and why I've done it. Now one of the first ones is um, is set to screen and it pretty much controls the light. Gradient maps aren't just for you know slapping on and adding a you know two tone color just for the sake of it. You can add and add them in to control the light of the scene. Now the sky for me at one point would be really bright, so that's why I added in a really simple um, multicolor gradient map just to get what I wanted. And the way a gradient map works is typically the far left side uh, as standard is the darkest and the far right is the lightest. So you want the colors further to the left to be much darker and much more saturated for it to look right. So you pick a really a really you know dark and vivid blue to get the effect that you want if you want to make it darker. And I've got here the the dark blue to orange muddy color to gray and, and then finally to white. The reason why is because I wanted to affect not only the sky but how the sky affected the rocks, which is why the blue is in there. So I set that to screen just to get the, the lighting look, the lit look, and that's just one thing that you need to add. Once you've added that in, don't forget to add a, you know, go to the mask that's already there once you add an adjustment layer and change it, you know, get rid of the things you don't want. Don't just slap it on, because I can guarantee when I disable this mask, you'll see that everything's bright and you don't want that, especially when you're adding multiple gradient maps, they will just all conflict if everything is showing everywhere all the time. The next one that I have lower down is um, pretty much for the top of the sky. You want to focus attention into one area. You don't want everything to be always screaming for attention. So some areas would be darker than others around the corners. And I want more vivid colors, which is why this one is set to overlay, which is a really great choice if you want to get those vivid colors. Now the colors I've used is purely a really simple dual color setup, which is the dark blue to the lighter blue, just to get those really, really nice shades of blue at the top of the sky. The last one that I've added in here is uh, more for the kind of the back depth, so what's really far behind, and it covers that silhouette right there behind her arm to make her arm stand out more. And giving that contrast is really important to making the overall image look much better. So think about what you want to give more attention to and what's further behind, what's closer to you. And use gradient maps to the fullest extent to get those effects because they're really great, really easy to use. And if you know how to use them right, they will do everything for you. Another quick tip to do with blending modes is although people might be phased by the fact that there are something like 20 different blending modes, really there's only three. Uh, there's multiply, screen, and then overlay. You might think, whoa, that's totally not true. What about the other ones? Anything within the multiply uh, is pretty much all a copy of multiply. So if you go below multiply, it's literally either softer or darker versions of the same effect. So it'll seem like it's different, but it's pretty much just multiplying with slightly different looks to it. So if I go to screen, you'll notice that something like color dodge might look almost the exact same as screen, but it'll be darker or slightly lighter. In the case of multiply, most of them are always, you know, a little darker or give slightly more of a vivid darkness. And in the case of, you know, what I'm in right now, it's just changing things very slightly depending on what you really want. You just need to find one. And I usually just turn down the opacity depending on what I want. But of course, if you're in something like overlay, some people really do think that soft light is completely different. But uh, in reality, it really isn't. So that's the thing to know. Pretty much only three there. Yes, color may be something people use quite a bit. But uh, really, you can. There's much better ways of doing it than color. I uh, just gotta grab an adjustment layer and do it that way. It's much more, much easier, much quicker. So that was pretty much one of my uh, one of my first tutorials posted on Yaosh. If you have any feedback, please do leave something in the comments section. I know it was a really long video, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, my two my speed arts are gonna be short, sweet, maybe fun. 
and um, just purely showing off and if I do do tutorials really often they will just be long and full of information that you guys might or might not, not enjoy so if you did like the video feel free to thumbs it up if you didn't like it absolutely feel free to dislike it and I will see you guys around